Alumni Association, UCOU, to come onto the dais. I now request Professor P. Lakshmi Narayan, sir, Registrar, UCOU, to come onto the dais. Here comes the moment. Please welcome our esteemed guest for the day, Sri Shantanu Narayan, sir, Chair and Chief Executive Officer, Adobe. With a huge round of Shri Shantar Narayanagar, Chair and CEO, Adobe, USA, Professor P. Lakshmi Narayana, Registrar, Usman University, Professor M. Kumar Garu, Dean Faculty of Engineering, Dr. Vijay Kumar, President of Alumni Association, and of the dais, Professor Malaysia, Dean Faculty of Engineering, Faculty of uh, Dean Development Digital Service, Professor Naveen Kumar, Professor Pandari Pandey, Professor Ramun Rao Garu, and Varu Prakash, and Professor Surala Udai, all heads of the departments, faculty members, your students, media, good morning once again. It is the day for Engineering College to celebrate. It is a proud moment for all of us faculty and students of engineering particularly. Why we are going to celebrate? Because Sri Shantar Narayana is going to receive hundreds of from great Usman University Honorary University. As you know, he is the 1984 EC batch of University College of Engineering. And you can come to the the honors cards are received by so many eminent personalities in the country. So he is now adjudged with the Prime Ministers and Presidents of India. And the eminent so that is the moment of occasion. So we have taken opportunity and also in this regard I thank the Alumni Association, particularly Dr. Vijay Kumar, made it to interact with our young minds and our students. So uh, my time is only 5 minutes. Just I wanted to highlight few points since 2 years because already you are there uh, in the inauguration of Alumni Association office in the ground floor. Sir, we have established a 3D printing center and cyber security, cyber law and artificial intelligence and machine learning in the college. And the governing body chairman now reconstituted and IIT Hyderabad Professor B.S. Murthy is our governing body chairman. He is a driving force for the college to develop and uh, take a lot of reforms, academic reforms. All the programs, UG, PG programs have been agreed by NBA and also approved by AACTE. And recently, two years back, we have started artificial was there and we have changed from 50 to 60 from the past uh, two years and also biomedical engineering changed from uh, increased intake from 30 to 40. And another good news is that now our college has got extension of autonomy for 10 years up to 30, 32. Recently, just four days back, we have received a letter from AST to start BE BTEC program for working professionals that is for diploma holders with this academic year, in this academic year. So we are formulating modalities and initially we have operated for three programs. All three programs, mechanical, civil and AML programs going to start from 23-24 academic year. 
So as per the 24, uh, 21 point agenda, the mooted by Honorable White Chancellor, we have taken a lot of reforms in the curriculum. We have introduced some of the units which are taught exclusively by Almaty industry persons as per their convenience, online mode, offline mode or blended mode. And also we have introduced B minors and honors in all the programs. So recently, BFSI, Banking Financial Services and Insurance, minor also introduced. Uh, there is a consortium is there, BSI consortium. So the first college is our college, which is approved in the academic council to introduce BFSI minor in the all the departments, seven departments. So regarding placements, almost 100 percent, sir, for all the circuit branches and 80 percent for the non-circuit branches. And the average package is 12 lakhs for uh, circuit branches for particular computer science and uh, 10 lakhs for other branches. And we are conducting regularly alumni talks, academic research lectures, guest lectures by eminent personalities and also introduce graduate exit feedback. At the time of going out, we are conducting like this and we are taking feedback of the outgoing students and we are implementing their views in terms of academics and also infrastructure into the college. Another is another good news is that Coal India Limited has sanctioned 3 crore rupees towards institution of the Professor Chai in the Department of Mining and Engineering. Already it is approved and advertisement has given. And uh, the foundation stone was laid on 8 March 2023 for construction of classroom complex for EC department just now we witnessed and which is sponsored by Singerity Calories Company Limited under CSR funds, 2 lakhs, 2 crores were given to construct EC classroom complex. So, Sri N. Sridhar, IAS, your junior, Sri N. Sridhar, IAS, CMD of SSCL is instrumental in sanctioning these 2 crore rupees. Apart from this, he also sanctioned 5, 3 crore rupees for institution of chair professor for again mining the department. For two chair professors, we have already given a So recently, last month, we have received a letter from NTPC Limited uh, stating that they have sanctioned five crores towards the infra infrastructure development for the mining engineering department. That means mining engineering department is going to be constructed shortly. And another good news is you might have stayed in uh, Kinder Hostel, that is a fourth, fourth year uh, students used to stay. That the Kinder Hostel is very old. So in place of that, we have uh, laid a found, uh, construction for 500 bedded, 500 bedded boys hostel, which is foundation stone laid by Honorable Minister for Education, P. Samita Indra in the presence of Honorable White Chancellor and Respector Hishka. And also our college has been certified by SO in terms of quality education, quality food, and including guest house food. And uh, SNP Global, a 60 years old company, USA, through United Way of Hyderabad, has given 1.26 crores worth of computers and video conference systems to our college last year. They promised to extend same facility for three years and uh, 41 students, girl students particularly, they got tuition, tuition fees refund and all girl students, uh, they already uh, got it through SNP Global. And uh, MOU is signed with the OU Foundation with the MHG of Corporation USA to establish artificial intelligence and machine learning center in the college level uh, being the nodal department is ECE. So, uh, your junior Veena Gundavelli Madam is instrumental in sanctioning A lab to the EC department. So our future plans are we are going to construct classroom complex for CSE department because AML is already added and mining engineering department and electrical engineering department going to celebrate platinum jubilee celebrations this uh, next year. So they are also planning to construct the separate building for electrical engineering department. And also we are planning to construct two crores worth of engineering college canteen shortly and we are in uh, we are uh, one donor is uh, ready to uh, sponsor for that and also providing gym facilities for the girls and the upgradation of existing gym facility for the boys so with this uh, i don't want to take much time uh, there are a lot of list is there because interaction is very important so i thank you sir for visiting our college and uh, going to interact with our students and once again 
from all our fraternity students and faculty, we congratulate you for receiving honorary Kaza. Honorary Kaza is Gaurav Doctorate, Telugu. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That was definitely. We can give an introduction to Shantanu over here. All of us know Shantanu, right? Yes or no? Can't hear? Yes, sir. Fantastic. 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 Okay. Now, children, my suggestion to you all is it's a golden opportunity for each one of us over here to interact with him, including the faculty. Any question you have which he can answer on an open podium let's be very careful okay please feel free to ask and today for this day he is one amongst us he has graduated from the same portals about 40 years ago he was exactly like each one of us over here so with due respect to his position etc you know ensure that the questions that are going to come from you are Absolutely, that can be answered professionally from there. Okay. So you can ask anything, what was his journey, you know, how did he spend his time here, anything under the sun. Okay, because we have also seen him but for a very glimpse period, but some of the seniors we have seen, you know, some of them actually, you know, I will not call it ragging, but you know, they did pull our leg when we came in the first year. Okay. So I think that's it. Second is, please do not crowd for photographs or selfies, okay, it's, it's not manners, we need, okay, we'll stop for a second and take photos, but let's not, you know, make the atmosphere claustrophobic, these are my two suggestions to you. Next thing, I don't know if this would be known to people, I don't know if somebody is going to talk about it, but one thing I would like to share over here is, most of us are looking at how come, you know about Usmania Foundation kind of thing. Last year when our Vice Chancellor Garu visited California, he had met Shantan. And one of the key suggestions that he had made is create a foundation and that took shape into what is called as Usmania Foundation. The moment he came back from US as an umbrella organization for the whole university, Usmania Foundation was created. And thank you, Chief, for the advice and suggestions. In one year, <coughs> close to 20 crores has been raised through this foundation. And I would only, because we are talking about it, because the associations, 
you know, it's a very old model, societal model. And all. If you look at all the great institutions on the globe and also in India, and to the institutions that we went to, like I am by and all, they moved away from associations and created foundations. So we've been telling, advising about this. Okay. And even IITs and all are moved to foundation. They're no longer the alumni, typical alumni associations kind of a environment. So I think we thank you for the great start for Sumanya Foundation. We've signed up a lot of industry, academia, you know, MOUs and agreements in the last meeting we had. Okay. So thank you. Thank you once more. And the alumni fraternity, and I'm sure today our alma mater is humbled for you to be here. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I would like to remind you that we really look up to you and the Alumni Association. Moving on, our institution stands tall in the pursuit of excellence as in a, and is an embodiment of dreams, a sanctuary of knowledge and a cradle of thousands of aspirations. It has come countless success stories and one such story is of our esteemed guest and an alumnus of our college, Sri Shantanu Narayan Sir. Mr. Shantanu Narayan Sir pursued his academic journey with unwavering determination. He earned his bachelor's degree in electronics and communications engineering from Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering at Osmania University. <laughs> Sir's thirst for knowledge led him to attain a master's degree in computer science from Bowling Green State University, where he honed his skills and deepened his understanding of the digital realm. Sir is the chairman and CEO at Adobe, a position where his visionary leadership came to the fore. Under his guidance, Adobe became a trailblazer and revolutionized the digital media and marketing software landscape. His strategic acumen and innovative thinking were instrumental in maintaining Adobe's position as a global leader in the industry. Throughout his illustrious career, Sir's contributions have garnered widespread recognition. He has been honored with numerous awards, including a prestigious position on Fortune's Business Person of the Year list. In 2019, in 2019, his outstanding achievements were acknowledged with India's esteemed civilian honor, the Padma Shri. This is a reflection of his significant impact on both the national and international technology sectors. Beyond his professional accomplishments, Shantanu Narayan Sir is known for his philanthropic endeavors and his commitment to driving positive change. I would now like to request Professor Sriram Meditesh Sir, Principal UCOU, to felicitate our esteemed guests. I would request the dignitaries on the dais to join him. Please give him a huge round of applause.
me uh, thank uh, you know, Professor Venkatesh, Dr. Vijay Kumar, uh, Professor Lakshmina, and Professor Malkarina for having me here today. Uh, it is truly an honor and it's great to see some old uh, classmates uh, you know, that I had when I was here. Uh, let me first start off by saying I'm a Hyderabadi. And so coming back to Hyderabad, where my entire family has been for generations is uh, truly a pleasure. Uh, my father actually studied uh, in Osmania Engineering College. Uh, when he studied in Osmania Engineering College, he did it in Urdu. The first year they were actually teaching in Urdu. And uh, he studied electrical engineering here. Uh, my mother has uh, multiple degrees uh, from Osmania, including a PhD. And so when I told her that I was uh, going to be getting a PhD, uh, she did remind me that she actually worked much harder for her PhD than I did. So. And then for decades, uh, she actually taught both at uh, the Usmania College uh, for Women in King Koti as well as Arts College. And so the pursuit of education, uh, I think, has been uh, something that's been in my family for a long time. My entire family, actually, whether you consider the affiliate universities as well, uh, including uh, Nizam College and others. Uh, a number of them study here. So when I wanted to uh, go to college, um, I actually wanted to be a journalist, and I've talked about this a lot, uh, because my mother taught English, I loved English, I was the editor of the school uh, newspaper in uh, Hyderabad Public School, Begampe, which is where I went to high school. Uh, but in those days, as you know, uh, it was perceived that either you had to do engineering or you had to do medicine. And the sight of blood scared me, so I said engineering was probably the lesser of the two evils. Uh, but I loved it. I absolutely uh, loved being uh, in engineering college. And, you know, when I reflect back on this day, and I'll touch on this later this evening, uh, you know, the first few years were really uh, characterized for me by making what are now lifelong friends. I was telling some of my friends here that uh, every week, even now, we have a you know, Zoom session uh, where six or seven of us engineering college classmates get together. So I guess my first message to you is, while academics is important, take the time to make lifelong friends because lifelong friends are a support structure that works with you for the rest of your life. Um, the other thing I would say is that I actually participated in a whole bunch of other activities. Uh, it was great to hear your uh, diction and how articulate you are. Uh, but I also edited the newspaper here. I, I participated in debates in these corridors. We used to play ping pong and tennis. I was a college tennis champion. I represented India in sailing. In other words, I did everything that I could not to study engineering for the first few years, uh, you know, is the truth be told. But it was, uh, you know, Professor R. V. B. Chari and, you know, Professor Padari Pandey is here, that at some point in me, the love for computers and the love for electrical engineering was really kindled. And that has turned out to be, you know, the blessing of a lifetime. Um, I studied uh, microprocessors and I think it was my fourth year, first semester, and even my uh, batch, I did, uh, you know, I, we wrote a terminal, we wrote an operating system, it was called CRT terminal using 8085 microprocessors, so I'm clearly dating myself in terms of how old I am when I did that. But what I want to tell you all is that, you know, you may not realize it today, but the faculty here, when they instill in you that love for learning, it's the love for learning and the ability to learn that really hopefully stays with you for a lifetime. So. Uh, on your behalf, I'm going to thank actually all of the faculty because while you don't realize it now, they are actually giving you the gift of a lifetime, uh, which is the gift of learning. And I certainly receive that. I'll spend a few minutes on Adobe and then let's open it up for questions because I do want to interact. Uh, I've had a blessed career uh, and you know at Adobe, I've been there for over 25 years. I think all of you know Adobe is the company that uh, our mission is to change the world through digital experiences. When I joined the company, the company was less than a billion dollars in revenue. Uh, we're over 20 billion in revenue right now. The market cap, uh, the market cap of the company was one billion dollars. We're now one of the most valuable companies on the planet. We're over 250 billion dollars. But it comes 
from the fact that we have intellectual. We like to say we're in the intellectual property business and or our, all our intellectual property, namely our people, go home every night. And so I think in whatever career all of you pursue, remember that it's the pursuit of intellectual property that at the end of the day is how companies thrive, how companies survive, and how companies change. And I've been fortunate enough to have an incredible team that I've been part of uh, as a result of that. But with that, you know, I'm actually, uh, you know, thank you again, Osmania University. I'd like to say, uh, you know, the thing that we always do when we meet on Saturday mornings is we introduce ourselves. So I'll introduce myself as roll number 80321 in OUEC. It really is a pleasure to be here. Thank you. And now if there are any questions, I'm happy to take questions. If there are no questions, we'll all go back to work. So. <laughs> Of Texas at Austin because my brother went to school there. 
Uh, my second choice was the University of Urbana, Illinois Urbana. And that's because my father went to school there. So those were my first two choices. I got admission in both places. They were both uh, for electrical or electronics engineering. And I applied to Bowling Green, as you mentioned, and I got admission in Bowling Green for computer science. Um, and, you know, I, I went to Bowling Green. And at that point, if you can look at it and say, academically, it was probably true that University of Illinois or, you know, University of Texas at Austin, I got into University of California, Berkeley. They were probably better institutions from a purely academic point of view. But on my first day in Bowling Green, my first day, I met my wife. And so the pursuit of education in our community, the pursuit of education turned out to be a really good thing for me. So I, I guess my point is, you know, all you can do is you can do your best. The rest, you have to not worry about it. And I think it's how one rebounds from adversity that is frankly more important than not dealing with adversity. And I would say if you have adversity or uh, tough times early in your career, you won't realize it at that point, but it's actually a gift because you learn how to deal with it, you learn, you learn how to move forward, and that's the most important thing. So do your best and you know, the rest, it's gonna happen. Thank you, sir. Get more opportunities for yourself, that's the thing. Pursue your, pursue different ideas. Yeah, uh, it was fun here. Yeah. Okay, I'll take this, then I'll take you next. Yes, yeah. so I'm the faculty of mechanical engineering. So when you are a student, of this great Adam Press year old university. Exactly, did you decide that during your engineering you want to become a Chetty or Chetty, you know, CEO of a great company of uh, the world, a truly of the entire world? Or, or what exactly is the motivator you want to become a CEO? You know, I. I can honestly say, uh, my family, the one thing that I'm very blessed is my entire family, the one thing they always had complete support was for education. As I said, my mother has, you know, an uh, MPhil in English literature and she has a PhD. My father in those days, in 1953, to go on a board to the United States uh, to study was very unusual. So, you know, for him as well, the pursuit of education is important. My wife uh, actually has three masters and, uh, you know, uh, PhD. So I'm actually the least qualified person in my family in terms of education. Uh, but to answer your question, uh, because my father had gone to the States and because my brother, I have only one brother, he's my older brother, he went to IIT Madras and then he was in the States, I always knew I had to go abroad and study and I wanted to get the experience of study. And so that was my first thing. Once I did that, I realized I was not a researcher. I liked solving computer problems. If you gave me a computer problem, I would solve it. But I knew I didn't want to do a PhD. So, you know, much like uh, my classmate, Vice Srinivas here, I went and did an MBA. So I did an MBA at Berkeley, uh, which was a great thing because I knew I wanted to be in the business of technology. So that was the second thing I did. Now, conventional wisdom after you do an MBA, uh, I was told by everybody, I was an engineering manager at that point at Apple Computer. So I was doing engineering management, I did my MBA, and everybody told me, hey, now that you've done an MBA, you shouldn't be in engineering, you should go off, and you should now become a you know, product manager, or you should become a general manager, or a business unit. And that was not what I liked. I like building products, and I like, you know, to this day, I love building engineering projects. I use every one of my products, I try and do my beta testing, and so I determined that I, I didn't want to do something that was conventional wisdom, and I think my career, has been characterized by not doing what's conventional wisdom. And so, you know, everybody will tell you, oh my God, you have to go to this school and then you have to do this. You know, I, when people ask me for advice, I always say, be careful what you ask for. You're not paying for that advice, so it's worthless, you know, if that makes sense. Uh, and so, I never really wanted to be a, a CEO. At some point, I said, you know, I want to pursue, uh, I, I want to do more. I took a lot of initiative both at uh, Apple and then I started my own company called Pitra. Uh, we did image sharing on the web. Uh, it was, you know, in the 90s we said people would want to share images. Uh, you know, the company didn't do great, but I learned a lot. And so I always take the positive from any experience. And then, uh, you know, I, I kept getting more responsibility because I took initiative. 
But I did not really plot saying I want to be a CEO. If I don't become CEO, it's not where you know my career is. And there are people who do that. But all of you know what's best for you. And what's best for me is I like building products. And so that's why I think I have the best job in the company. Um, the founder of Adobe, when he made me CEO, this was you know again many many years ago. He told me one thing that I will always remember, and I think it's good advice for everybody. He told me if I don't like my job, I have one person to blame. In other words, he was telling me that if I didn't like my job, I was not a victim. I was the only person that I should blame myself. And so I think that really worked out. And then at some point, at some point, you know, I realized that I was in the running for CEO. And you know, the competitive part of me, as I said, I was a competitive tennis player. I was a competitive uh, ping pong player. I still remember losing in the finals here in the table tennis tournament uh, to Satish. And you know, I won the first two games. He won the last three games. So you can tell I'm a little competitive and I have a good memory. So I was competitive and I became CEO and now I'm competitive for the company. But I didn't pursue being CEO as the only thing that would characterize me. It's worked out well, but if it doesn't happen, you have to find the things that make you happy. And don't do things because others tell you you need to do it. And I've never done that. I've never done that. I've always pursued my dreams and I've been fortunate in that my parents have encouraged me to do that. So that would be my feedback. And 16 years later, I'm still doing it. It's actually on the longer side. If you think about average CEO tenure now for an S&P 500 company in the US, it's less than six years. I don't know what else I would do. And so I like what I'm doing and I, you know, I, I keep doing it. Hi, Shantanu. Uh, I'm Amta from EC final year. OK. Uh, so since you did uh, see us in Masters and CS in the States. How is the lifestyle different from India? How is the what different? Sorry? Lifestyle. Oh, lifestyle. You know, I, I, I think, I mean, I, I really believe this when I say the opportunity that all of you, I mean, 40 years ago, uh, when we all graduated, a number of us used to go to the States because we felt like the opportunities, whether it was universities and further pursuit or jobs, were, you know, they were so much more in the United States than they are in India. I mean, I've said this publicly, I don't know if I was graduating today whether I would go to the United States because there's so much opportunity in this country and being able to do it in this country with the culture that we have and the family that we have, uh, I think that would be way more supporting. But I, I, I hesitate to say this a little bit, but it's the truth. I was not a great student, as my classmates here know, I, I was not a great student here in Usmania. I did all these other things. As I said, you know, in my final year, I said, okay, I've got to buckle down and I've got to get a, to be a serious. So the first thing I did when I went to Bowling Green is I said, okay, let me prove to myself that I can get, you know, there you have an A, B, C, D uh, grading system. You don't have a grading system that has marks. So I said, I want to get all A's. I want to get the equivalent of a 4.0 GPA. And so I worked really hard. So the lifestyle there, unlike here, all I did was study. Uh, it helped my brother. My elder brother is three years older than me. And he he, had a, he saw in me a lot of potential, but he also knew I was a little bit of a vela. So he said, you know, I've got to. So he told me that if I got a B in any class in the US, I would get deported back to India. And so I was convincing myself I didn't want to get deported. So I studied very hard. I got straight A's in you know, my master's in computer science because I wanted to prove to myself more than anybody else that I could do academics. And I fell in love. I fell in love, as I said, with computer science. I mean, I, I actually did something very wise. Um, I went back and I took even undergrad classes. So I took a data structures class and, you know, all of you teach this. I was truly amazed to hear that we're teaching AI ML here and hopefully you're teaching models and all of that. You know, when I when I went to school here, as we all know, we used, we had to go. The Fortran lab uh, was to the right here, so we would take you know all those uh, you know papers and punch cards and send in the punch cards. And so the academic experience in the U.S. is whatever you make of it. And some people decided that they wanted to have an academic experience and a social experience. I was very clear for a year and a half. I really wanted to have the academic experience. I wanted to prove to myself that I was going to do it. In my second year, uh, as Neil knows, uh, one of my best friends, a person who was with me right through 
high school, college uh, came, and we both roomed together. So Seshadri Srinivasan, who was ECE batch of 85, he and I, you know, we're still best friends to this day. He stayed uh, with me, and so it was a great experience my second year. But I worked hard. I worked hard. You know, there's a law of how much you have to work. I just started a little bit later, and I keep doing it right now. So things have worked out. Thank you. Yep, I can hear you. Yeah. So, Shantanuji? No, behind you, sorry. There's one behind you with the okay. mic and that. Okay. Uh, good morning, Shantanu, sir. Uh, Again, no, sir, but it's okay. Keep going. A little loudly. Good morning, Shantanu, sir. Sir, oh, sir. my question to you is that uh, who gave you the first promotion in, uh, in Adopt? Because, you know, for an Indian to you know, travel overseas and get a job in US. It's not very easy to climb up the steps. So, whom are you more grateful for? Who, who is the one who you to dedicate your CEO designation? I, it's it's a really good question. You know, I, I've had the gift. I mean, there's so many people that I'm fortunate for all the opportunities that I have. So, I wouldn't say it's one person. I mean, I've heard the question. It's the... And, yeah, I, I think as much of it, honestly, I was the first Indian CEO of a high-tech company. Nowadays, you know, if you're not an Indian, no, 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 no yeah. Nowadays, if you're not an Indian that, that's named a high-tech CEO, people wonder what's going on. And I think it's more a reflection of America as well, which is it is the land of opportunity. Um, for those of you who don't know, Satya uh, Nadella, who's the CEO of Microsoft, he and I went to the same high school. You know, he's from Hyderabad as well. And so Satya and I went to uh, HBS together and when he became CEO, he came to me and, you know, we both were talking about how the U.S. gives us. But the two, are, the two messages I could send you. Uh, I once worked for an Indian in Apple called Gursharan Singh Sidhu. Gursharan was one of the fundamental innovators of our time. He actually invented plug-and-play networking. We all take it for granted, things like Bluetooth and all of that, but the precursor of that was Apple Talk and Gursharan invented it, and I worked for him directly. Everything that I did, Gursharan would say, yeah, that was okay, now go do better. And in those days when I was working for him, I would feel really upset because it felt like nothing that I did was good enough for him. Later I realized that in his own way, he thought that I had immense potential and he wanted me to get my potential. So find the people, not necessarily just the people who say, you've done a good job, but find the people who also will tell you that you can do better. Because if you can find the people who are going to tell you that you can do better, you hopefully strive for more. Um, I'll talk about Adobe briefly because you asked that. I joined in 98 as a general manager. Uh, in June of 98, the company hit a wall and we actually had to do layoffs. We did 25% layoffs and I had to completely change my role. And I said, hey, you know, I've come in as a general manager, should I change my roles? I, I, because they didn't want me to be a general manager, they wanted me to run layout engineering and ship in design, uh, which was a layout product. And so the lesson for me was, if you do what's important in the company at that point, people will remember it. There are a lot of people who go work at a company and all they want to know is what's in it for them. Which is like, why am I not getting a promotion? Why am I not getting a salary increase? And it's about me. And I think I always showed that it was about the company first. And I think part of my success is attributed to the fact that I always put the company first and me second. And so, you know, when I did that in June of 98, when the company hit a wall, they completely changed my role. I had half the people who were reporting to me that I had when I joined. And I said, it's okay. They want me to do this, I'll go do this. Six months later, I was promoted to run all of engineering. So, the point is, your careers will go through some zigzags. Think about if you're learning and think about if it's the right thing for a company. Because if it's the right thing for a company, you know, good things will happen. So, that was my thing. But, uh, it was the two founders of Adobe, John Warnock and Chuck Yeshke, who I think saw in me some potential. And I'll give them credit. I mean, I was, as I said, the first Indian CEO of a high-tech company, they never made me feel like I was an Indian. They always made me feel like, you know, they made me feel like I was doing good work, and if I was doing good work, it was a meritocracy. And I think that's an amazing, you know, tribute to the U.S. Thank you. Thank you.
Hi Shantanu. Okay. Uh, I'm Shantanu. I'm password of this college. I'm currently a consultant. Uh, <coughs> you have you have been in the Silicon Valley for a very long time. You have seen the rise and fall of several digital companies. I just want to ask, what was the one thing that let you stay at Adobe for such a long time? Nobody else gave me a job, so if nobody else gave me a job, I had to stay at Adobe for the longest time. I mean, again, I I was very fortunate. Uh, you know, I just started a company. I started a company called Pictra. We raised thirty million dollars. This was in ninety four, ninety five. I thought people would want to share images. Uh, you know, digital photography was just happening. I was very passionate about digital photography, uh, and so uh, Adobe was looking to buy the company. They didn't end up buying the company. Uh, we sold our technology to Fuji and I joined Adobe. And truth be told, at that point, I said, okay, the entrepreneurial genes were still in me. I thought I'd stay at Adobe for nine months to a year, and then I'd go off and start another company. Uh, as I just told in the previous answer, within nine months, they asked me to run all engineering. Why, why do people start companies? Why do people start companies? They start a small company, hopefully to make it a large company. And they start a company if they want to feel ownership for the company, correct? If you feel like, oh my God, it's my company and I have influence and I can do what I want, then you like it, right? And so different people get motivated by different things. Some get motivated by financial rewards. Some get motivated by recognition. Some get motivated by, you know, building products. As I said, I was always passionate about building products. So within nine months, if you get the opportunity to run all engineering, to drive you know, what is the brand of a company? I mean, think of it. How many other companies do you know in the world that have a brand, two brands that are part of the vocabulary? The fact that Photoshop and PDF are part of every person's vocabulary in computers. Google has one. It's Google, right? I mean, so it was very fortunate to be there. And so, you know, the other thing I always say when people ask me for, you know, what makes sense, it always looks like the grass is greener on the other side. The grass is not always greener on the other side. And the number of people who've left Adobe and then realized, oh my God, I left for a worse company and you know they don't have the value. So I, I, I say people do their best work when you resonate with what the mission is of a company and the values of the company. I like what Adobe stands for. We're changing the world through digital experiences. I mean, chances are the packaging of this bottle a piece of Adobe software was used, right, to create this, the newspapers, the magazines. I mean, you know, Adobe is used ubiquitously, and so I'm in the fortunate position. So I can honestly say, in the 25 years I've been at Adobe, I've never taken a phone call to find another job. So I will retire at Adobe, and, you know, but I'm fortunate. I'm fortunate. So find, find the companies, when you find a company, find the company that you look at and say, does what they do really resonate with me? Do I feel a sense of pride? And then within that, take the initiative to find the job that you want. And if you don't like it, I mean, people's careers, uh, it's a two-way street. Everybody thinks the company owes them. You owe the company as much. And so if you think of that with that attitude, right, which is I'm going to do my best and the company will hopefully give me the opportunities, then great things happen. But, but the truth is I haven't got a job by anybody else yet. So. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, Shantanu. It's Rohit from Pioneer Computer Science. So, I have a question. Like, we have a problem, like, uh, a statement that's traveling in social media, like, uh, young guys should work for 70 to 80 hours a week. So, as a CEO, what's your view on that? So, do you expect the same from young guys in the industry? You know, I. I think as it relates to work ethic, right, and as it relates to what you need to do, the question is again, what's right for you? I mean, if you want to, you know, there's, uh, I was a tennis player, as I said, uh, you know, I was a tennis player growing up, and there's a saying by Boris Becker, uh, you know, who was at one point one of the great tennis players, which is, he said, if you're not practicing, somebody else is, just remember that. So it's a question of what you want and what your expectations are for yourself. There is no right or wrong answer. Frankly, you should ignore what I say. For me, I work hard because I like what I do. And you know, I want to accomplish things. And so it's up to you, right? I mean, I, there is an element of if you want to work 100 hours, work 100 hours. And I would say for me, my career, 
there are times when you know something is due and you work like crazy and there are other times when you know people ask me about work life balance i'll answer that question a different way they ask me about my work life balance um in the 25 years that i've been at adobe there hasn't been one day when i have worked so some people can look at it and say oh my god you're not setting a great role model for you know when you disconnect at the same time people who work for me and work with me if they want to take time off i'm unbelievably supportive of them taking time off because they have different and what i say is i have multiple passions my family is my passion golf is a passion so pursue your passions you know this should i work 70 hours or 80 hours at adobe we don't take attendance we don't have you come in and you have to you know sign in when you come in and you have to sign out when you leave and so and social media loves to make this drama of what people say you should do what you want you know if you want to work hard work hard and you'll get whatever the results of that is if you don't want to work hard it's your choice you know the main thing i would tell people is don't take this victim mentality of like i'm being told what to do you are more in control of your career your destiny than you give yourself credit and you only have yourself as i my boss told me i have only myself to blame if i don't like what i do So that's how I would answer your question. You know, I, I, I'll say that again. Nowadays, for CEOs, sorry, I, am I, I'm running out of time. You'll tell me when. You know, just turn off the mic, like the Oscars or music, right? <laughs> just turn off the mic, and then I'll know I'm done. But okay, right. I, there is no. I, it, it's what you want. Sure. Hello, Shanti. Hi. I'm Sanjana, Chupi first year student. Ask you that what's your ultimate source? Am I audible? Yeah. What's your ultimate source of motivation? Because for me, like motivation is most volatile thing ever. Like I'm listening to you, I'm motivated. Like for five days, I go home, then it all vaporizes. So, what is the source of your motivation? What keeps you going? Like, you know, uh, again, yeah, there's personal motivation and there's professional motivation. Uh, I just became a grandfather for the first time and so you know on the personal side motivation is seeing his face every morning and you know uh, seeing that smile on his face and so you know you get your personal motivation from your family and you know both my boys uh, I was talking to uh, again my uh, colleague vice president was about what his kids were doing and you know we now take tremendous pride in what my kids are doing one is a venture capitalist one works for Spotify so that's motivation for me you know being able to be there for your kids and your family when they want to do it uh, professionally for me my motivation is impact i like impact i like building products that billions of people can use and it changes their lives and i think technology uh, is both the great equalizer i mean think about it before adobe desktop publishing you you could publish right think about you know all the video that you're seeing on the internet think about gaming without adobe flash which i mean doesn't exist today but we pioneer you know the internet as you know it today rich interactive applications the ability to take video on the net so i get tremendous motivation by seeing what my team does uh, and the gratification of what they have done and the impact that that has on society you know uh, just I, i'm here in india but today at the white house president biden invited us because he's doing a you know ai on artificial intelligence they're announcing a big artificial intelligence uh, you know new executive order and adobe actually influenced that we had, we've done a lot in this area called content authenticity to you know avoid fake news uh, and so i get motivated by you know the world's content is produced by adobe so we're not only taking the technology aspect we take social responsibility very seriously and how do we do it so that motivates me when you become a ceo the truth is uh and don't tell anybody this but you do less and less yourself you know you have an entire team of people who do amazing stuff and so you have to get motivated and you have to get gratification from what your team does if you can't get pride in the fact that these 30000 employees are doing their best work and making a difference in society you're in the wrong job so professionally i get motivated by impact when somebody looks at me and says hey i used photoshop to do something that's a matter of great pride when people say i exchange all my information through pdf so you know that's how i get my motivation 
it's nice being here too. I mean, it is motivating to be with, you know, I, I, I love meeting people. Hybrid work really, you know, got to me. I mean, I get energy from people. I hopefully impart some energy to people. And so that's motivating too. I mean, next generation to see the excitement, the opportunity, the fact that you have a great education, that's also motivating because it means that India, I mean, the, the economy in India, you know, there isn't a CEO in the world who isn't saying, I've got to go figure out how I use India at my advantage. This is the moment for India, honestly. With everything that is happening, I know, I mean, I, you created it. But this is the moment we have an incredible demographics, we have an incredible economy, we have incredible access to intellectual property, we have access to capital. If we don't take advantage of it in India right now, I, I don't know that this opportunity will come back again. So seize the moment. You know, absolutely seize the moment. Start your own company, go work for a company, do non-profit, whatever, whatever motivates you. Yeah, make an impact. Good morning, sir. Uh, my name is Mahesh. Uh, PhD is calling. Good morning, sir. You guys are all very good students. The one thing you haven't learned is when I say don't call me sir. That's the one thing you don't seem to be learning. That's okay. Sorry, go ahead. Sir, uh, it's a great privilege. Huh? Yeah, English. Huh? Sir, it's a great privilege to talk in this campus. My question is, sir, in India mostly, uh, uh, like, uh, Especially in Hispanic campus, most of the people are from marginalized sections. Are from what, sorry? For most of the people from marginalized people, like uh, marginalized, marginalized people. Yeah. Okay. We think that the government job is ultimately life. But in the artificial world, the world is transforming like anything. A simple question is, sir, my simple question is, after 5 or 10 years, I want to stand there and I just I want to interact with people. What you have interacted with me, like you. For the what kind of mindset we need to have and what kind of, what kind of skills we need to require and mostly how to handle the pain in this business world. That's all. You know, when I grew up in India, uh, I used to always say that, you know, reading, writing and arithmetic, I mean, in the three R's, and if you had access to education, education is the great equalizer, right? I mean, when people get access to an education, then, you know, they have opportunity. And, you know, all of us want opportunity and I think education is a great on-ramp to opportunity. So the way I would answer your question is, it used to be reading, writing and arithmetic. Today it's access to computing, right? It's access to computing, it's digital literacy, it's the ability to take your idea. I mean, access to capital is not an issue in this country. It really isn't, right? And so, you're fortunate. I mean, you can always look at it and say, oh my God, somebody else has, the other, has more opportunity than me. Or you can look at it and say, I have way more opportunity than a billion people in this country. And I always chose to take that approach. I always look at it and say, I was fortunate. I was studying electronics. In those days, you know, uh, ECE was one of the things that everybody aspired to get. And so when I was fortunate enough. So uh, that's what I would say. You know, I yeah, use the opportunity to be clear on what your goals are. Write it down. Sometimes people don't even write goals. I did write my goals. When I first took over as CEO in 2007, I went to a class at Harvard Business School, and it's a new CEO class. And the new CEO class, they ask you to write down. You're actually giving your retirement speech, which I haven't used yet, as you can tell, but you know. Uh, it, it was, it's actually a very instructive thing. So you're introducing yourself to every new CEO, and all of them are first time CEOs. It was a class and you're giving your retirement speech. So I had to write down what I wanted as my objectives and what I wanted as my goals. And then I tried to figure out how I could achieve those. So that's what I would say. Am I, you know, there's always going to be somebody that you can look at and say they have more opportunity than me. If you do that, you'll probably feel bad. There's also always somebody that you can look at and feel like you have way more opportunity than them. And I think that's the way I've tried to live my life. Which is, it's worked out well so far. It's worked out well. So I don't know if that helps, but that's what I would say. Pursue your studies, then write down what you would like to achieve, and then find, find people who can help you with that, right? Find yourself and prove. When I took over as CEO, uh, there were four other people uh, who were also CEOs at the same time. And we became a self-help group. We would meet once a quarter 
and we would tell each other what was going well in our lives and we would tell each other what was not going well in our lives. But we were a support structure to help us. So that's the other thing I would say. Find friends. I mean, as I said, I still get together with my Usmania Engineering College classmates once a week. Once a week we get together and we talk about what's going on in our lives. That's an incredible blessing. Sure. Hello, sir. I'm Vaishnavi from Jibli. Uh, First year, I have two questions for you, and I promise I won't take much of your time. Uh, my very first question, as you said, you love cricket. So, who's your favorite cricketer? I would have to say Sachin. Okay. Yeah, you know, until his record is beaten, the fact that he has a hundred hundreds, you know, is pretty damn good. And, and talk about his longevity as well, right? I mean, he started playing at 16, and you know. And he was never in a controversy. If you notice, he always said, let my batting speak for itself. So I think there's a lot to learn from him, not just in the game of cricket, but how he's lived his life. Uh, my last question, uh, and this is something which is lingering in my mind uh, from a lot of time. I wanted to know, how do you take decisions when you're stuck in a situation where both of the choices seem uh, equally appealing? So how do you make the correct decision? No, no, I'm fine, don't worry. I, it's okay, don't worry. I'm old, but not that old yet. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's fine. I, I get energy by standing, so. Um, I, it's a great question. I, I will tell you, when I... Part of what you have to do is you become all senior managers. It is very rare. It's very rare that my entire senior management team comes to me and says, Shantanu, we're all unanimous about this decision we need to make. What do you think? Right? Because then that's an easy decision. Chances are they're going to come to you and say, hey, two of us think we should do this, two of us think we should do this. You make the decision. Right? And I've got very comfortable with making decisions. And I'll tell you why I've become very comfortable with making decisions. I've become very comfortable because I'm not always right. And I'm comfortable with that. If you can't get comfortable with making a decision and saying, I'm going to make wrong decisions, then you're not going to be in the position that I am, being able to make the kinds of bets or investments that we need to make. So, we make investments, billions of dollars of investments in technology. Some of them are right, some of them are wrong. Again, going back to the cricket analogy, I want more opportunities to be at the crease and back. You know, sometimes I'm going to strike out, right? sometimes I'm going to make a zero. See, baseball, now that I'm in the U.S., I use baseball analogies and, you know, baseball is not quite as good as cricket, I will tell you. But, so, that's the way I make the thing. So, if you get comfortable with the fact that you're going to make wrong. Second thing is, what is, what is artificial intelligence? What's machine learning? What is, what is computers? Computers know how to do pattern matching, correct? They match a pattern and then hopefully, based on that pattern, they predict what will happen. If I've been in my role for as long as I have, hopefully I have good pattern matching of what I think will happen. But if it's wrong, you change it. I've got so comfortable with being wrong. And again, that's a, I actually think that is one of my skills, which is you're ready to make a decision when you need to make it. Conversely, if I don't need to make a decision at a time, I don't make it. I say, you know what, it's not yet, it's premature, I don't have enough data. And making a decision right now or not making a decision. I am very good at dealing with uncertainty and ambiguity. And as you get more senior in your career, I think you will have to deal with more uncertainty and ambiguity. People who want certainty are probably not going to be as successful in the tech business because in the tech business, you have to deal with uncertainty. So that's how I would answer your question. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you. You know, Professor Padari Pandey is here, so I'm going to have him go first. So the question uh, from an academic, which is interesting for me, was about, you know, what is it about the undergrad education and the curriculum? What parts of it do you use? I mean, you know, the speculation is that a lot of what you learn, you don't potentially use. 
I, I, I think the best part about what you get in education is how to think, correct? And how to, you know, how to be logical. And so, you're right, I think, you know, if you are, if you're studying computer science or AI machine learning or mechanical or whatever you're studying, and you're doing a PhD and you're going to become an academics, you're going to use that material way more than if you're like me, where I study computer science, but then I'm now in management. However, however, when somebody comes to me, I mean, it's just before coming here, I had a three-hour meeting with the Adobe research folks. And these are Adobe research, they're, you know, the best researchers at Adobe, they're all doing our, uh, you know, models for imaging. Uh, if you look at our generative AI models, it's called Firefly. Check out firefly.adobe.com. See, I'm, I'm always selling also. You know, in my role, you have to sell software. So, uh, I'm sitting with them. And I would say it's my grounding in computer science that at least helps me understand when they talk about diffusion models versus autoregressive models and they talk about the training of the data and all of that. If I'm not at least at the point where I can understand the basics of computer science and what that means, I don't think I could do my job as effectively as I can. Now, you're right in that am I actually using that to write code nowadays? The answer is no. But was that knowledge important for me to decide? I'll give you another example. If people are like, hey, we've got to build this product this way or build this product that way. You know, in engineering, everybody always tells you why something cannot be done. And in my job, I have to, you know, convince them that it can be done. I mean, you have to get people, people amaze you with their ingenuity. I always say my management job, if I can connect all the dots between where I want the company to go and where we are today, I'm not being ambitious enough. I'm not being aspirational enough. So, long-winded way of saying is, it all depends on what you're going to do with that education. I think if you go into academics, if you go into research, if you're in the research lab, I, I would say they do that. They all write papers. We we publish at Adobe, I think, more papers at SIGGRAPH, which is the area that we are in, a lot. I don't use that directly, but I use the knowledge to understand and to be able to help. And so I, I would say how you think is way more important than perhaps the actual material. Yeah. Do you approve this narrow specialization that you can tell the AI, 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 the is what I'm good at and what I'm a specialist at and what I'm not good at and what I'm not a specialist at. And I'll tell you why I say this. Nowadays with CEOs, you know the question that somebody asked also about the how many hours that you work. What is happening in the US is that for CEOs, even political questions, everybody now expects a CEO to opine about all political issues. And I tend to say I focus on my areas of expertise uh, and that's all, you know, I can opine on. You, you, one should know one's limitations. I know my limitations. Academic curriculum is not one of my limitations. All of you folks are the experts on that. Again, I, all, all I can tell is we're always looking for great talent that has great rigor in academic pursuit. And that, I think, is the most important thing for us. I mean, when people have strong academic pursuit, I think it's a great thing. I'll take a few. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I am, uh, my name is Papa Rao. And I am a different government servant, presently serving as an adjunct faculty for mining in the So, being a teacher, Uh, I am a teaching mining engineering student as a adjunct uh, faculty member. My interest is, it is not a question to you sir, you know, we want some advice from you because you are reached the highest level and uh, all these things are there. You are from your side, if you give some suggestion to the students, it is benefited. So my advice uh, from you is, suppose an engineering student who is having less marks, uh, below average marks, my interest is the people all should get more above engineering, uh, above average marks. So, Going back to your college days and with your all your experience, what suggestions or tips or what you can suggest for my students 
to get more marks. This is out of the question. So whatever I ask, if it is wrong, sorry. Please give your advice. You know, again, in addition to the faculty, the thing I would say is, and you know, some of my classmates here know this. Uh, I was fortunate because when I had difficulty understanding or comprehending to your point, I would go to V. Mahesh Kumar. V. Mahesh was, I think, the gold medalist in our batch. Uh, Mahesh Kumar Varnasi is a professor right now. And so find other people who can, you know, if you're a student not doing well. Uh, you know, it was very interesting when my son went to uh, college. You realize that, you know, there's something about academics where people learn differently. And how you can, you know, everybody talks about personalized education. And so I, I think there's an element of if somebody is not doing well, somebody has to help them understand what is it that actually, you know, is good. And sometimes you learn better from a classmate uh, because the classmate is able to also teach you and explain things in a different way. And so that's how I benefited. Again, I can only speak to my experience. Academics is not my, you know, area of specialization. I have a whole bunch of other areas of specialization, but, you know, academics is not. And so I'm sure, you know, you're the experts in all of this stuff. So that's what I would say. And not everybody is going to be academically brilliant. I mean, I, you know, people have different skills. We all have our superpowers. And so find the superpower that helps. I find it. So the suggestion to all of you is clearly work hard, but otherwise find people that you know who may help you explain that in a better way. And I think that that for me was very helpful. And so I would call Mahesh and it would be two days before the final exam and I would be like, Mahesh, it's a little bit of a crisis, now help me out here and tell me what I should study. And he knew how I could study, so he helped me a lot. So fine, you know, you have to jugaad, right? That was my jugaad. Recently completed PhD in Usman University and going to receive 
my PhD certificate in the best presence of you in the coming allocation. I'm receiving my PhD in the August uh, presence of you, sir. Thank you, sir. So before, I mean, I want to have a clarification on artificial intelligence. I want to share my happiness that my son, Ashwin Chandra Putta, is working in Adobe, California, uh, he stays in San Jose. Uh, actually, he says that uh, he, uh, he will uh, dream platform, uh, that is Adobe Explain uh, experience platform and his work of area is uh, real time and uh, customer uh, profile. So I want to share that uh, information to you. Thank you so much and I feel very happy that my son is here with you in your company. Thank you. Thank uh, you for sharing. So the question is that the artificial intelligence nowadays we are seeing that it is fast growing. And recently I was seeing a video in WhatsApp uh, on a girl, artificial, I mean that uh, robo uh, is uh, walking at the street like we cannot hardly find out that it is robot. It is like almost a human being. So in the coming days, if it is the so, in future, artificial intelligence to robot may command the mankind. Then if such is the state, what is your word on that? You know, I, again, first, I, I think to your point, the advances in artificial intelligence are truly amazing. I mean, I, as I said, I've been spending more time with researchers but I think if you take a step back, I mean, I think the advances in AI are because they're building on successive generations of computing paradigms, right? I mean, the fact is, when things move to the cloud, all the data move to the cloud, by virtue of the fact that the data move to the cloud, you could train these models. The fact that we have the kind of computing capabilities that we have, whether it's NVIDIA or Amazon, AWS, or Azure with Microsoft, that sort of allows it. I am not a believer in general intelligence coming and replacing humans in the near time. So maybe it will happen in some of your generation. I don't know that it happens in, in my generation. What I will say is humans who use artificial intelligence to do their jobs may replace humans who don't use artificial intelligence to do their jobs. So if you're, yes, if you're a person who's actually going to uh, take advantage of it, take advantage of it. What Adobe has done with Firefly, we believe that everybody has the story to tell, the creative story. We want you to be an on-ramp. It's not going to replace the story that you want to tell. It's not going to replace the human emotion. But computers, from day one, every time computers have emerged, desktop has emerged, people have said, this is going to replace humans. Will disruption happen? Absolutely, disruption is going to happen. But in the grand scheme, is this going to make computing more accessible, computing more fun, computing more affordable? I believe that. I believe that and I believe it's actually going to have, you know, billions more who have access to computers. So, I'm not one who is the doom and gloom. I know there are other people who are the doom and gloom and human civilization as we know it is over. I, I, I don't believe in that. I, but I do think humans who don't embrace artificial intelligence to understand how it can help them do what they do, ignore it at your own peril. Because I don't think that's a good thing. So learn. Learn from it and you know understand how it's going to help. That's what I would say. So, uh, good morning sir. Um, so I have a question. Uh, we would love to use, uh, we would love to use uh, products like Adobe Firefly I can barely hear you. I'm sorry, I don't know if the mic is. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. So, we would love to experiment and learn with products like Adobe Firefly and Creative Cloud. But uh, they're too expensive for uh, a per student to personally use them. And uh, we see that Adobe has been working with few colleges like uh, New Horizon and uh, Rasuni College in India. Uh, we would love to see a collaboration with uh, Adobe in Osmania University. Uh, we could Photoshop a selfie with you. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I think education, you're right. I mean, access to education is something, I mean, I'll certainly follow up, uh, you know, with uh, the principal to understand what it is to, you know, make sure it's access. A lot of our stuff is uh, freemium. And so, you know, Firefly, you can uh, go try it out, you know, create an Adobe ID and use it. But I will follow up. I will follow up. Uh, you know, it is our... It is our goal to get people to have access to our technology because, you know, that is something we aspire for. Okay, Neil. Oh, it's like my point of view. So the question was around Firefly 5.0. 
we vary the least uh, image model to need. I mean, and you're already getting us to, you know, uh, go on to fire. And yeah, so for everybody else, uh, this is a couple of things about Adobe. Uh, you know, we want anybody who has a visual piece of story that they want to tell, we want Adobe to be the way in which you tell that. When we started Firefly, there are two ways in which you can do it. You can train your models on all data, whether or not you have intellectual property. It was really important to us to train our data based on the intellectual property that we had licensed for. So unlike all of the other companies, we actually indemnify you for the use of Firefly. So that's, you know, a big, big difference between everybody else, uh, Neil, in terms of what we do. I think even Image Model 2, it's unbelievable. I mean, you know, the image improvements, if you look at all of these AI right now, and if you do a, a prompt, if you notice the hands are slightly off, you know, the, the certain things, faces are slightly off, because a lot of it has to do with the licensing of the images. So I think we've done some pretty incredible work on, with GANs on, you know, doing uh, face recognition as well as improving that face. I, where Adobe is headed is, I mean, we certainly have to do a model for video. We have to do a model for vectors. So if you can do a model where, you know, you can actually generate uh, frames of images. So that's a big area of exploration for us. 3D uh, and what we can do around 3D and animation, we're creating our own models for that. Um, you know, when people ask me what's going to happen five years from now, a year ago, we didn't really have Firefly, uh, you know, on the roadmap. So, I mean, again, going back to the question that somebody else asked about decisions, being able to pivot at a fast is also, you know, the hallmark of a great company. So, uh, but you're teaching the next generation of students, so you tell me what I, I should expect in terms of what happens in Firefly. But it's really exciting. It's unbelievably exciting. I have one Okay. So Uday, who was my classmate, tells me that I told him in 2018 to go for blockchain technology. I don't know whether he is, uh, you know, uh, unhappy that he pursued my advice and therefore, you know, he hasn't done well. That's why I tell you that you shouldn't listen to me. That's what I've been telling people. You know, take out of this what you want, uh, but blockchain. You know, I think the benefits of blockchain, I think with all technology, you know, when it's whether it's AI, whether it's when the metaverse came, whether it's blockchain, I, I think it's not just about the technology, it's about what are the uses of technology. And will the use of that technology, can you work, work in your own mind the way it will be successful? I think where blockchain technology has benefits is ledger, right? A distributed ledger and distributed computing, and so that's the benefit. Anytime anybody says this technology is going to rule the world, chances are it's being overhyped. And every technology goes through this it emerges, then you go through the hype cycle, then you go through the what's called trough of disillusionment, and then it sort of finds its purpose in life, so to speak. And so, you know, I, I think it's the same with blockchain. I think in financial services, it's probably used a lot more than it's used in other verticals. And so I think, you know, it, it has merit the fact that it's a distributed ledger. And I think, you know, so I think as people study all these new technologies, I. It's, the downside is believing that any new technology will have relevance across every aspect of computing. But I think the way you learn all of these different things, hopefully you understand where it will be used and where it's not. So I would say blockchain is still in financial services, it's used a lot. I don't know that it's used a lot in document productivity or creativity, but that's okay. That's how I would answer your question. A few more and then are we almost done? Or? Okay. Sir, I am Prithvi Rahul of Mechanical First Year. I wanted to ask three questions for you, sir. Somebody asked one, now it's gone to two, now it's going to three. Okay, go ahead. Sir, how deep fake the how deep fake network the imaging is ruining the, ruining the world that everyone are editing everyone are editing videos and photos using deep fake network or software, sir. That how come they press Blindly, that images are deep fake. That okay, that's one question. I got it. Next, then how you invested your time on time in Adobe, sir, the, during recession time? Okay, recession. Uh, Two. During recession. Do you have a third question or that? Yes, sir. During, sir, Adobe. 
that's fine. Let me answer your first two questions. I, I, I think the first question is a good one, uh, which is, it is true that Adobe software is used in the creation of the world's content. Uh, we created this thing called Content Authenticity Initiative. And what the Content Authenticity Initiative is to say that every piece of content, how can you do a watermark, or think of it as a nutrition label. Right? I mean, when you drink this bottle of water, it has a nutrition label. It tells you where it was produced, when it might be relevant, till how many calories that you have. And so every piece of Adobe software right now, if you use Adobe software, you can actually create this nutrition label. You can do the content credentials for it. And so within Photoshop, you can say this is. Uh, it was a pretty interesting week this week. Leica, which is a camera manufacturer, they have also included it. So in order to solve this content authenticity problem, the first thing is, all the way down to chips, all the way down to camera manufacturers, they are all, they've all agreed that they will put this nutrition label. So if you take a picture with a, you know, camera, a Canon camera like he is, it'll say this picture was taken at Osmania University on the 31st of October at this time. Okay, so that's step one. If that picture was edited within Photoshop or edited within any Adobe software, we will tell you, so and so edited it, you know, this is the new provenance of that picture. We have worked with distributors, so New York Times, Facebook, Microsoft, other companies. They have all agreed that this metadata associated with the images, they will transmit it. So if it's being sent to a social media site, if it's being sent to a different site, it also has all of these content credentials. So there's a lot of the plumbing that's been done to combat what you're referring to as deep fakes. There's a fourth step in that process. And in many ways, the fourth step in the process is the most important. Again, as I said, President Biden, just today, he invited us, he invited me to come because they're talking about what AI is going to do. The fourth step in the process is all of you as consumers, when you see a piece of content on that social media site, or whether it's on YouTube, or wherever you're looking at your piece of content, are you going to look at it and say, I want to understand the content credentials? So it doesn't matter the fact that everybody is accompanying the piece of content with the appropriate metadata. Until you folks say, I want to look at it and I want to know who created it. Was it an official Usmania Engineering College piece of content that, you know, Professor Venkatesh signed? So the plumbing or the infrastructure to do it all exists and we can do it and you can do a check mark. We work with the government, both here as well as you know the center of government. They want for the elections to actually publish that piece of content and have the check mark. The question is whether consumers will actually pay the attention and when they see a piece of content that doesn't have that check mark, will they say, I know it's fake and therefore I'm not going to look at it. So here, here's where human involvement is also going to be required. So that's how I would answer your question. We've done a lot, we've been working on this for years. There are 3,000 companies that have all signed up, they're all part of this content authenticity initiative. You can check it out online. Camera manufacturers, distributors of content, authors like us. Uh, it's that last phase of what the consumer will do. And I think governments are going to be the most important because if governments start to publish all their content and they make sure that they know that this check mark is there, it's a bit like when people did digital commerce and PayPal came along, or UPI here in this country, you know that it's authentic. So there's that part of that knowing that it's authentic and caring that it's authentic. You all care that it's authentic when you do digital commerce because it's your money. Similarly, when you look at a piece of content, it should not be trusted very blindly. I agree with that. Thank you. Okay. Two more, you're okay with that? Last question. Okay, last question. Okay. Hi, sir. Yeah. Hi, sir. Hi. Uh, just, I, I would like to uh, expect two, two answers from you. One is for parents and brothers, sisters, so many are here. Other question, other answer from you is towards responsible persons. First, first question is, my question is, sir, from, if you see from LKG to PG, everyone, teachers, everyone motivating towards software. Even you are also shifted from core to software. If all intellectuals like you people are traveling towards software, what about other disciplines? Whereas if you see, other disciplines are reaching Chandrayaan up to moon. 
but so many disciplines are still at back end. This question, sir, how we can balance the universe and society? And second thing, you please advise the parents also towards software. Thank you, sir. Again, it takes uh, different kinds of disciplines. I am a big believer in that. And, you know, but natural selection happens, right? I mean, the fact that we have full capacity for every discipline, the fact that you reintroduced mining engineering, I think it reflects that there is interest in multiple disciplines here in Osmania. And I, but I, I will say, I, again, I'm not biased towards software, but I would say that even in mining or in mechanical or in any other field, how you use computers and being able to program is only going to be a helpful aspect for all of them as well. So that, that, that's what I would do. And as it relates to parents, uh, you know, kids, uh, my kids, the last person they would listen to when I gave them advice is me. So uh, I'm careful about who I give advice to. Okay, last question. Yeah, yeah. So, Dr. Ravid Kumar, sir, professor of PC, and uh, Alam Nasir Uswani, and also Alam Nasir HBS also. Uh, what would be the uh, best contribution you can give it to a particular organization where you are working? And what would be the uh, you know, best thing you can give back to the alumni You know, the best contribution to a university, as I said, when I, my legacy, hopefully, at Adobe, is that I leave the company in a better spot than when I was there. And I need good management, right? I mean, at the end of the day, we're in the people business. And so if we have a scalable organization, that's what I work on every day. I want to build it so that the company not only does great software, but we do it in a responsible way. I think responsible companies, that is a big, important part for, you know, what I'm trying to do. I think in terms of uh, helping my alma mater, I don't know. I mean, you tell me. I, you know, I'm getting energy from all of you, so hopefully I pay it forward a little bit. But thank you all again very much for having me here. Really. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It is rightly said that there is nothing more influential than the words spoken by someone whom we look up to. Thank you, sir. We are grateful for your time and presence. Moving on. I would now like to request Professor P. Chandrasekhar, sir, Vice Principal, UCOU, to give word of thanks. Good afternoon, Dr. Varanda, respected dignitaries on the dais and off the dais, on behalf of University College of Engineering and my personal behalf, I profusely thank. Shri Shantan Narayanji, Chair and CEO of Adobe UCA, USA for a momentous and valuable interactive session. Proud alumni of EC Department and Engineering College, we congratulate you on receiving honorable doctorate from prestigious Usmani University. We, the faculty and young budding engineers are motivated and energized with the session. The University College of Engineering Alma Mater is looking forward for your guidance and support to take our institute to next higher level. We thank Professor D. Ravindar, Honorable Vice Chancellor of Usman University, guide and driving force to our institute for his initiative for this session to happen. We thank the bridge between the alumni and institute for his alumni association, in particular Dr. D. Vijay Kumar. President Alumni Association for his proactive initiative for this event to happen. We thank Professor S. Ramchandram, former Vice Chancellor, Professor V. M. Pandre Pandre, Registrar Usmani University, Dean Faculty of Engineering, other guests, proud alumni, teaching faculty, heads of the departments, and my dear students for your presence and active participation, participation to make this session a grand success. I thank one and all for your directly and indirectly to make this event a grand success. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We are delighted to inform our esteemed dignitaries that there will be an exclusive guided visit to the ECE department following this session. Thank you.
Thank you all for being a part of this gathering where knowledge flowed freely and ideas were exchanged. Your presence has made this session truly exceptional. Wishing you all continued success. Signing off, Sanya Mehta.